the first parameter crossing over to the other shore is uh, the practice of giving, the second, the practice of diligence, and the third is the practice of uh, mindfulness trainings. Many of us, uh, not to say all of us here, are committed to the practice of mindful tra- uh, mindfulness trainings. The five mindfulness trainings are considered to be very concrete practices for our protection and the protection of uh, our uh, beloved ones. Also, of our city, of our nation. The other day, Sister Chen Kong suggested that uh, we send to President Clinton a book on the five mindfulness trainings and ask him how to uh, implement the practice uh, on an international, uh, on a national level. Because the substance of the five mindfulness trainings can be found in every uh, uh, spiritual uh, traditions, but the but the presentation of the five mindfulness trainings uh, we offer to you is a very very uh, clear, very concrete, and it is our conviction that if the nation uh, live by the faithfulness uh, trainings, there will be a deep transformation. There will be much less uh, suffering and much more harmony and happiness. The five mindfulness trainings can be presented as a non-sectarian, non-religious practice. And I don't think that any spiritual tradition would see anything wrong uh, within the five uh, mindfulness uh, trainings. And each each, uh, tradition may offer a version of the five mindfulness trainings, but the essence will be the same, of course. Very concrete, very effective. And to live according to the five uh, mindfulness trainings, to have the training going on every day, we get the best kind of protection. And we can arrive at uh, deep transformation of our individual life and also our uh, uh, society. So this is also a kind of gift When you practice the five uh, mindfulness trainings, you offer the best gift of your life to your beloved ones. Because you manifest the solidity and joy and compassion and uh, equanimity. And that is the best kind of gift you can Giving, diligence, mindfulness, trainings. And we know, we know that uh, we need a Sangha in order for the practice of the five mindfulness trainings to be easy. It is much easier to practice in the Sangha setting. Uh, We may like to have a discussion within our family to see, to help people see that the five mindfulness trainings are exactly what we need for our own protection 
and growth. And if we live accordingly, we will avoid making each other unhappy. The practice of uh, deep listening and using loving speech, for instance, alone can transform the atmosphere of the family right away. And if the family practices well, it will influence the society. And again, children are capable of the practice. The fourth practice of getting crossing over to the other shore is the practice of uh, inclusiveness. We have learned quite a bit about this. We want to exclude no one. We know that we train ourselves in the art of embracing. And then our heart will grow larger and larger every day and be able to embrace uh, people and the difficulties. Remember the, uh, the, the example on the earth and water. The earth is great. That is why the earth can receive, embrace, and transform whatever we pour on it. The water is great because the water is capable of uh, receiving, uh, embracing, and purifying. Please remember the image of a handful of salt poured into uh, a bowl. Because the water, the quantity of water in the bowl is small, that is why uh, the salt makes it impossible for people to drink the water. But if we pour that amount of salt in a river, and then the river can absorb it and transform it, and we can continue to drink from the river, because the river is large. If we have uh, understanding and compassion, and then we don't have to suffer of these things. Even if they say uh, such a mean thing, if they have, they do uh, such a, uh, an action that is not nice, we still don't suffer because our heart is big. Because we have understanding and compassion, that, it, that is why we can embrace and we don't have to suffer. We don't want to exclude anyone. And we can go very, very far because our heart is large. And that is the practice of uh, inclusiveness. Uh, there are um, other kind of ways of translate, translating, like of endurance or forbearance. But if we, we look deeply into the nature of the teaching, uh, we see that uh, inclusiveness is a better term. Chanti paramita. The fifth is uh, meditation, the practice of meditation, namely mindfulness and concentration. We know that uh, in a difficult situation, in an irritating situation, in a controversial situation, our going back to our mindful breathing and smiling can provoke, can produce a miracle. 
if you can go back to yourself and be fully present and restore your solidity, your freedom with your mindfulness, and then you can overcome that irritation very easily. You can practice embracing more easily. You can produce your smile very easily. Suppose two young men about to fight each other. And if one young man is capable of breathing in and remember that uh, if uh, the fighting starts, both of them may go to the hospital. And that inside come, and he will tell, do you really want the fight? We might end up in the hospital. And that will help the other person to wake up. And instead of uh, fighting each other, they might sit down and talk to each other. So it needs only one, two or three seconds in order to make the difference. A flash of awareness, one in-breath is needed in order to, to, to have the transformation. And if in our daily life we train ourselves in the art of uh, mindful breathing, uh, we can, we will be able to do this miracle, to perform these miracles. We can intervene and stop a strategy, uh, a, a tragedy. We will not create the tragedy, but we can even. Uh, intervene in order to stop a tragedy that is about to take place. You become uh, a bodhisattva capable of reconciling and restoring peace. Meditation, the practice of mindfulness, help us to be fully present there and to touch the beauties, the beauty of life the wonders of life, the elements that are refreshing, uh, healing. And if we know how to appreciate these uh, positive things, we will be able to release the negative very easily. It would be a waste if we don't know how to profit from these uh, refreshing and healing elements available. It would be a pity if we allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by that kind of uh, feeling of anger, anger and uh, uh, sorrow and discrimination. So meditation is a practice that can help us cross over to the other shore, the shore of well-being. And you don't need uh, uh, ten years of uh, uh, sitting meditation to be able to do that. Because uh, uh, the practice of uh, mindful walking, the practice of uh, mindful breathing, uh, can already provoke a miracle, produce a miracle. And you can just cross over to the other shore like that in just a few seconds the power of awakening. You can produce awakening at every moment. Look in the, at the blue sky. You take one deep breath and you are able to touch the uh, immensity, the um, Mm, solidity, the freedom represented by the blue sky. And that is for our nourishment. And it does not need uh, a lot of practice. Mindful movements.
จริงจริงครับยอยกว่าอยากจะเพิ่มเติมสิ่งปรามิตาส์เป็นแพลวะกับสิ่งปัตโตส And in the middle, you can uh, write the word mindfulness. The mind in the present moment. Have the giving, diligence, Mindfulness training, inclusiveness, meditation, and insight. And the sub substance of uh, every practice uh, may be called uh, mindfulness. And this uh, is something that we can practice in our daily life. Insight, prajna, is said to be the mother all the Buddhas. Prajna Paramita, the insight that helps you to cross to the other shore, has produced so many Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And you are also children of her. It is by insight that you are born into the Dharma. And you grow up in uh, as a practitioner. And insight can help us to go to the other shore very quickly. When you touch the seed of insight within you, you see what to do and what not to do. And suddenly you find yourself on the other shore, the shore of well-being, of non-fear. Non of uh, loving kindness. One of the examples, uh, hugging meditation, when you, uh, when you are uh, about to have a dispute 
when you get angry at your beloved one, you need the insight of impermanence, of interbeing. Any insight would help. <laughs> impermanence, interbeing. Getting angry at each other in the historical dimension, I close my eyes and I look deeply. In 300 years, where you will you be, my beloved one? In 300 years, where I will be myself? So that is to touch the seed of impermanence in our store of consciousness. And if you do well, breathing in and breathing out, and visualize you and your beloved one 300 years from now, then you open your eyes. You are a different person. Your anger vanishes, and you find that the only meaningful thing to do is to hug her with uh, the awareness that uh, she is still alive, and you are also alive. You touch the miracle of uh, life. And that is because we have been able to touch the seed of insight that is already in us. You don't need a teacher to give you the insight. You have the seed of insight within yourself. The teacher is a friend who can help you identify the seed of insight within you. Because uh, you are a Buddha to be. If you know how to touch the insight within you, uh, the Buddha in you will continue to manifest. Any insight would be able to help you to the other shore. And that is why uh, it is said that uh, Prajna Paramita is the mother of all the Buddha.